Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we are continuing with our Trivi Let's Talk Lore series. Last episode, we left off as Lady Wu reminded Sun Quan of his brother's last words. So let's find out what those words are. On Sun Ce's deathbed, he told his little brother Sun Quan, 内事不决问张昭, which translate to, ask Zhang Zhao if there is an internal issue that needs to be resolved. But if there is an external crisis, then the best person to ask is Zhou Yu. Clearly, the invasion from Cao Cao is an external crisis, so the best man to ask here is Zhou Yu, who is currently at Puyang Lake training the navy. Since Puyang is right next to Chai Sang, a messenger was immediately dispatched to summon Zhou Yu, and by nightfall, Zhou Yu has arrived in Chai Sang. Now, of all the court officials and generals in the Wu court, Lu Su is closest with Zhou Yu, so Lu Su immediately invited himself into Zhou Yu's residence to welcome him back and to inform him of all that has been happening. After listening to Lu Su, Zhou Yu asked Lu Su if it was alright to invite Zhuge Liang over for a chat, so Lu Su heads out to the inn to pick up Zhuge Liang. But just as he has left, a group of scholars led by none other than Zhang Zhao also invited themselves to Zhou Yu's residence. Long story short, Zhang Zhao and his group are here to find out where Zhou Yu stands on the matter of surrendering or fighting back. So after listening to Zhang Zhao explain why Wu needed to surrender, Zhou Yu kindly reassured the scholars that he also intends to tell Sun Quan that surrendering is the best option and seize them out. However, Zhou Yu's night is just about to get interesting as Chen Pu, Huang Gai, and a group of generals who favor fighting back also invited themselves to Zhou Yu's residence. Now, although Zhou Yu is the admiral of the navy and ranks higher than most of these generals, he still belongs to a newer generation of generals who are younger and joined Wu under Sun Ce, while generals like Chen Pu and Huang Gai have been serving the Sun clan since the early days of Sun Jian, so Zhou Yu has a lot of respect for these older generals. And after listening to this group explain how they did not spill their blood their entire lives only to see Wu hand over all their hard work to Cao Cao, Zhou Yu tells them that he too has decided that it's best to fight back and seize them out too. But then another group led by Zhuge Jin and Lü Fan, who represented the neutral factions in the court, also invited themselves to Zhou Yu's residence, as they too wanted to find out where Zhou Yu stood on the matter. Zhou Yu politely asked for their opinion, and Zhuge Jin excused himself from the matter, as after all, Zhuge Liang was his younger brother. But he did summarize the current situation of the court to Zhou Yu. Those who seek comfort and ease have chose to surrender, while those who wish to defend the work of three generations of the Sun clan have picked the harder route of fighting back. But before Zhou Yu could answer to this group, another group, led by Gan Ning and Lü Meng, who represented the younger generations of generals, also invited themselves over to Zhou Yu's residence to voice their desire to fight. As those who want to surrender and those who want to fight bickered inside Zhou Yu's residence, Zhou Yu finally had enough and kindly asked everyone to go home as he will decide on the matter tomorrow at court along with everyone else. After everyone cleared out, finally Lu Su returned with Zhuge Liang, the one man Zhou Yu actually wanted to see. As they took their seat inside Zhou Yu's residence, Lu Su quickly asked Zhou Yu that he wanted to fight, right? And Zhou Yu replies, Cao Cao is using the emperor to justify his campaign, and with the army numbering the millions, how can we fight back? If we fight and lose, then the result will be much worse for the Sun clan. So I have made up my mind to recommend our lord to surrender tomorrow. Hearing this, Lu Su is super taken aback, as he was certain Zhou Yu was on his side. So he becomes visibly angry as he reminded Zhou Yu that when Sun Ce died, he entrusted the Sun clan's future and the life of his younger brother all to him. So how can he forsaken his brotherhood with Sun Ce now and recommend to surrender? As the two argued, Zhuge Liang sat there and observed until he finally let out a laugh. Zhou Yu then stops and asks Zhuge Liang if he's laughing at him. And Zhuge Liang replies, No, I'm laughing at Lu Su, who clearly does not see this situation clearly. Now Lu Su is even more confused. He's thinking, Wait, 
didn't I invite you over from Liu Bei to try to persuade Sun Quan to go to war together? I thought we were at least on the same team. Now first Zhou Yu and now you Zhuge Liang both suddenly want to surrender? What is going on? Zhuge Liang then speaks to Zhou Yu. Cao Cao is clearly a military genius. Everyone who has gone against him has perished, whether you are Lü Bu, Yuan Shao, Yuan Shu, or Liu Biao. Yet now in the entire world, only my lord Liu Bei dares to resist him. I serve my lord faithfully, so I have no choice. But clearly Zhou Yu sees the situation more clearly, and if Wu surrenders, then he can certainly keep his family safe. And if he decides to work for Cao Cao, maybe Cao Cao can even make him rich. If you want help, I have one plan for you to get a good peace deal. All you need is two people from Wu and one swift boat, and Cao Cao will happily turn around and go back north. This statement got Zhou Yu curious, as he has no intention to surrender, but he did want to test to see how Zhuge Liang will react when he suggests to Lu Su that he will recommend surrender. But now Zhuge Liang claims that Wu can negotiate a favorable surrender deal at the cost of just two people. So Zhou Yu asks Zhuge Liang who the two people are. Zhuge Liang answers, Cao Cao has recently built a palace for himself called the Bronze Peacock Palace. And as he is well known for his taste in beautiful women, he has stated his desire to stockpile the palace with beautiful women from all around the kingdom. From Wu, he named Da Qiao and Xiao Qiao. So if Wu can spare these two women and send them to Cao Cao as gifts, he will surely sign a favorable surrender term with Wu. Zhou Yu quickly asks, how did Zhuge Liang know of Cao Cao's desire for these two particular women? Zhuge Liang replies that when the palace was completed, Cao Cao wrote a poem commemorating the palace, and in the poem, he stated his desire for these two girls, as they are well known for their beauty. And Zhuge Liang then proceeded to recite the whole poem for Zhou Yu to hear. By the end of the poem, Zhou Yu jumps up from his seat, points his sword to the north, and swears to kill Cao Cao. Seeing Zhou Yu's angry reaction, Zhuge Liang quickly asks why he is overreacting over just two civilians. Historically, when the nomadic tribes of the north have attacked the Han, the emperor often had to marry his own princess to the tribal leaders to sue for peace, so the cost of two civilian girls seemed hardly an issue. Zhou Yu answers, You don't know. Da Qiao is the wife of the late Sun Ce, and Xiao Qiao is my own wife. Hearing this, Zhuge Liang quickly bows down to apologize, even though deep down inside, Zhuge Liang knew this and wanted to use this poem to incite anger out of Zhou Yu to ensure that he would recommend Sun Quan to fight to the death. Now, of course, even if Zhuge Liang didn't use this ploy, Zhou Yu would have recommended to fight anyways, or else why would he be spending this whole time training the navy in Puyang Lake? But with this ploy, Zhuge Liang guaranteed the alliance between Liu Bei and Sun Quan. So the next day, Zhou Yu arrives in court, with Sun Quan sitting at the end of the room in the center, the room is divided with about 30 scholars led by Zhang Zhao, who stood on the left side, representing those who wanted to surrender, and another 30 generals standing on the right, led by Chen Pu and Huang Gai, who represented those who want to fight back. So Sun Quan asked Zhou Yu what he think is the best course of action for them. Zhou Yu politely asked Zhang Zhao, as he is the head strategist, what he thought. Zhang Zhao points out all of Cao Cao's strength and recommends that the best course of action for them is to surrender. Hearing this, Zhou Yu answers, Cao Cao claims to be the prime minister of the Han, but he is clearly just a usurper who has the emperor hostage. The whole world knows this, so he does not have the support of the emperor or the people. Our people have resided safely in the south for three generations now. Our troops are ready and our ships are numerous. If we do not help the country by destroying this usurper, then we bring shame to all our ancestors. Plus, Cao Cao's campaign south has broken three basic rules of war. First, he is leaving the north when in fact there are still Ma Teng and Han Sui in the northwest who are not yet conquered. So if he stays in the south for too long, there will be those behind him that will take advantage of the situation. This is his first mistake. His second mistake is that winter is fast approaching. Soon the local crops will be exhausted, and he will have to rely on a long supply line to keep his army sustained. This is his second mistake. Lastly, he is bringing a large army of northerners to the south. 
Not only are they not adept in naval warfare, many of them are not even suited to our climate and will suffer from illness. This is their third mistake. With all these mistakes, all I need is to utilize our elite navy to crush them. Hearing this, Sun Quan has finally made up his mind as he stood up, drew his sword, and sliced off a corner of the desk in front of him. He tells his entire court, even those who has wanted to surrender this whole time, that dire time has come to Wu, and as their lord, he has decided that they will fight to the bitter end. If anyone still dares to suggest surrender anymore, then they will be like the corner on this desk and be sliced off from Wu. Sun Quan then names Zhou Yu as the chief commander of the joint armed forces, Chen Pu as second in command, and Lu Su as the chief strategist. And with that, the court was dismissed as everyone started their preparation for war. Back at Zhou Yu's residence, Zhou Yu invited Zhuge Liang over as he wanted to ask if Zhuge Liang had any brilliant plans to fight off Cao Cao. But to his surprise, Zhuge Liang claims that Sun Quan still had doubts, so there was no need to plan right now. And it's best that Zhou Yu pays another visit to Sun Quan in private to reassure his lord before they make their final plan together, as Sun Quan is still clearly worried about the sheer numbers of Cao Cao's forces. So that night, Zhou Yu requests another audience with Sun Quan, where he asked Sun Quan if he was still worried. Sun Quan then expressed his concerns that Cao Cao's manpower advantage is clearly something they can't overcome. Hearing this, Zhou Yu is first shocked by Zhuge Liang's ability to read people, but then quickly explains to Sun Quan that Cao Cao's forces is definitely not one million strong. Historically, the armed forces of the Central Plains never amounted to more than 150,000 people, and Yuan Shao's forces never really amounted to over 70 or 80,000. Even when combined, their hearts are not in this fight, so far from their homeland. So all I need is 50,000 men, and I can ensure a great victory. Hearing this, Sun Quan becomes much more assured and tells Zhou Yu to take the 50,000 men first. While he might not be personally at the front lines with Zhou Yu and the troops, he will continue to recruit and train new troops and provide additional supplies from the rear. And if the time should come that he is needed to be at the front line, then please do not hesitate to use me, and I will fight alongside our brave brothers from the south as we will certainly defeat Cao Cao. Hearing this, Zhou Yu reassures Sun Quan that hopefully this will never be needed and excuses himself. Back at his residence, he could not sleep, as Zhuge Liang has clearly shown to be smarter than him. First, he tricked him with Cao Cao's poem, and now he can clearly see into Sun Quan's mind. So he summons Lu Su late at night and says to him, If we keep Zhuge Liang around, one day he will become the biggest threat to Wu. We must kill him now. To find out if Zhuge Liang will survive Zhou Yu's jealousy, come back tomorrow as these two star-crossed strategists continue their battle of wits in our lore series.